All right, let's kick off everybody. Unlocking potential, harnessing custom properties in and central. Okay, so um, Will, uh, I just noticed that you've got a different domain name. Domain name. How, how, let me try that again. Domain name. There we go. Um, that I'm used to saying. Uh, can't wait to hear that story. Um, this content may contain forward-looking statements regarding future product plans and development efforts. What this basically means is big legal blurb on on your screen is that uh, I get I don't get to make decisions around product plans or priorities or when features and functionality come out. Just know that if I talk about something uh, forward-looking, that uh, uh, plans do change. Okay. So a little housekeeping for everyone. Everyone is on mute, obviously, for the quality of the recording. That's at the very bottom session is being recorded and will be posted to enable you in the coming days or weeks ahead. Depends on how busy, busy our video team is. Uh, use the questions pane to ask questions at any time. This boot camp is for you. Um, and let me know if I have any audio or video issues. I'm actually hardwired directly into my computer, so I shouldn't have any, but it happens. Okay. Uh, who am I? My name is Jason Murphy. I'm one of seven head nerds here at Enable. Uh, primarily, I am the head nerd for all things N Central, along with my colleague, Paul Kelly. Um, I was the director of managed services for a small B boutique MSP. I was the security and technology leader for one of the largest MSPs in North America. Um, just know I've been using N Central for well, well over a decade at this point. Okay. So on the agenda for today, what are custom properties? What are the benefits of using custom properties? Uh, I'm a huge proponent of custom properties, so I really enjoy giving this boot camp. We're going to talk about creating and modifying custom properties using custom properties in automation. We're going to do a couple examples around uh, custom properties. One, if we want to talk about using automation with custom properties, we're going to talk about using automation with custom properties in rules. We're going to talk about storing information what you should be storing in information in that central, and then using custom properties as an input uh, for automation, okay? So, and then we're gonna get into the exporting and importing of custom properties through the API, and then we're gonna tie it all together with some tips and tricks at the very end, okay? Now, I did this boot camp this morning. It was probably 45 minutes. I'm expecting it's going to be 45 to 50 minutes on this one as well, okay? So, what are custom properties. Custom properties are these user-defined fields that allow you to store additional information um, related to your devices and customers within your and central environment. I know that's very wordy, so let's break it down, okay? Device custom properties, there's a few different types, so we're going to go into the types. Device-based custom properties or custom device properties, as we call it, can be assigned to devices based on an operating system type, like uh, Windows 11, Windows 10, um, or commonly, more commonly, um, used on device classes, laptops or workstations, or laptops and workstations, or laptops, workstations, and servers. Any new devices um, to and central that meet these criteria so whether you're using the operating system uh, definition, if Windows 10 comes in, it gets the custom property. Otherwise, if it's a laptop workstation or a server, it gets the custom property, right? Now we're gonna go through all of this as we go through. Just know that these can be added at a service org, a customer level, or a site level. However, I do urge you to build the majority of your custom properties at the service org for ease of management. Okay, now, customer-based custom properties, which I hate that term. Um, these are custom org properties, as we call them, and these can be assigned to a select number um, of the uh, a select number or all of your customers in sight. So you can individually choose customers. So for example, if you were doing an SLA and that was, SLA was part of your platinum package, um, you could effectively pick and choose customers who get these properties. Um, you can choose to propagate them to new customers. You can propagate to some customers, all sites, no sites, I leave it to you. Um, so, or you don't have to propagate them at all. Okay, now 
custom property types. There are five, okay? Date types, so for example, storing the, the date of a system warranty, okay? Or purchase date. Text type, which is effectively any string value, okay? Which means if it is alphanumeric or numeric, effectively meets the criteria of a string. URL, which I've never used, I'll be honest with you. Uh, drop down. So drop downs have multiple data points that you can use. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let me just have a quick drink here. And password. Now, the password type, not the probably the best name, right? It should be like encrypted type or something like that because the password is simply a way to hide and encrypt the particular particular um, information that you're storing in that field, which means no other tech can ever see it. Okay, so they're now hidden. So it's a hidden uh, a hidden type. Now, what are the benefits of using custom properties? What are the benefits of using custom properties? To provide flexibility in managing unique and the unique data needs of your organization, which can be a significant advantage for your MSP. Um, if you understand by the end of this bootcamp how to unlock the potential of custom properties, and hopefully you do, that way I know I'm going to be successful at this bootcamp, is that there is a ton of power behind custom properties. Now, what can they do? They can facilitate the creation of new workflows, okay? Enhance platform flexibility. Custom properties make and central better. It makes automation better. It makes rules better. It makes filters better. Allow for automated data extraction and storage. Pulling information out or pushing information into custom properties is as easy as a VB script. Or I shouldn't call it a VB script, a PowerShell script um, using our REST API. I have no idea why I just called it a VB script. Uh, I think it was because I was talking about VB scripting yesterday. Uh, asset management, store asset tags, warranty dates, or other inventory information for easy reference. And this is important because while Ncentral does a great job at collecting data, sometimes you have your own unique needs when it comes to asset tags or purchase dates or warranty renewals or suggested renewal dates or what have you. Like uh, you could do your own end of life dates if you wanted to, you know, you know, you purchase the equipment from Dell on day one. Well, I'm going to now facilitate a, a, a conversation with the customer in three years time. Customer details, right? Record customer specific information such as contact details, SLA terms, your program offering level, network configurations, which can then uh, be mapped. You can now map those service levels uh, to customers and the devices um, below them. Uh, device configuration can be used to store critical information st such as site tokens, installation keys, bit locker keys, et cetera. All the important things that you want to have in and central so that you can get them at your fingertips or of course, use them within automation. Okay, let's talk about it. All right, so creating and modifying custom properties. Now, let me pull up my end central here. Now, first and foremost, if you traverse into administration, you will see custom properties. Now, I have several custom properties that I built this morning uh, based on the boot camp I did in the AM, but we're going to talk about a few of these. Okay, so it's, we've, you can see that there's several use cases. First and foremost, let's talk about customer, customer properties, which I, again, hate. Custom org properties, again, it's based on tenancy. I can come into another customer like here and kick on um, custom properties, and I can actually build it at this level, right? So you can see that I have one called system, and then I'll add another one right here, text, and I'm gonna call this program level. I'm gonna call this one gold. And then again, I don't need to choose the customer because I've now gone into the tenancy of the customer, read three to one company, and then I can save that. 
So you can see that based on where you are when you create the custom property is very important. Now, if I go back up to the enable head nerds and I click on custom properties, oh wow, why did that disappear? Because I have now nested the custom property at that customer level, which I would never recommend. You want to try to manage all of your custom properties from one single pane of glass. Okay, so try to build them right here, right? So service org and then custom properties. However, there might be some unique situations where you don't want to do that or you can't do that, and that's fine too. Just know if you come in here to customers and then go into again that text type, you can simply check off and call this program level. I would have to spell it correctly, and then I'll put this as platinum. put an S there and then save. And then again, doing the exact same thing. However, is built at this level, okay? Even though you're choosing just that one customer, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. We don't need any overlap. Okay, so we've now built the customer, custom property or custom org property. What we're gonna do now is focus on the device property. Okay, so custom device property. And again, same thing. If I go into drop down, I can now contain multiple data points within this one property. There's some specific use cases that I typically use, especially around patch management for this. So when I do patch days of the week, actually, let's do something different. Let's go patch reboots of the week. I don't know what to call it, but we'll just go with that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do Monday 3 a.m. We're going to do Tuesday 1 a.m. Thursday Thursday at 5 a.m. And we'll do this one as not defined this is my default, okay? Oop, there we go, not defined. And I think I spelled that correctly. It's important to note that when you are creating a custom property, especially when using dropdowns, there is always going to be at least one default. The reason being is that whenever you create a custom property, whether a text type, a dropdown, or what have you, you always want to enter in something because when you do an export, there is nothing worse than having blank fields in an Excel spreadsheet. I, I It just triggers me. Let's just put it that way. So you always want to have something. Now, like I said before, you can choose operating systems. So if I want to do all Windows 11, for example, I can come in here and select this and then pull all of those over. Not like that. Let's try that one more time like that, there we go. This will have all of Windows 11 in here. <clears throat> However, there is also nothing wrong with simply just choosing all workstations and laptops and just adding that. Now that is typically what I do, right? Now, that being said, if I'm doing patch reboots of the day of the week at 3 a.m., 5 a.m., I'm probably not going to do that for Windows workstations and laptops. So what I am going to do is just choose servers because yeah, effectively I can do that on servers, no problem. Okay, now let me just fix that A because it's bugging me. Now, save, okay? So I've got those reboots scheduled for days of the week based on just the custom property. However, there's no automation or any management assigned to that custom property. We're gonna to get to the use case for that, but I really wanted to show you that whenever you're using a custom property, there are several ways to kind of build them, right? So if I'm doing something like a BitLocker key, I'm always gonna put something in here, right? I'll leave it to you. To, I usually put null, to be honest with you, because I know I'm going to overwrite that null with the actual BitLocker key. Just know that if it's a virtual machine or something else, and then uh, you do your export of the Bit, BitLocker keys, do you want to see just blank fields, or do you want to see something that's null where you can actually filter on them, 
right? So I find I find it very, very useful to have something in that field, okay? And then again, I would choose something like servers, add that in, okay? There we go. That's the use case around custom properties. Now, that being said, if I go into views and the all device view, I can now click into my test machine here. I can now go into settings. I can now go into custom properties, and then I can see all of the data points that I'm populating with information, right? Patch days of the week, well, I just created that, right? So I haven't done anything with that just yet, but I could because it has drop downs. Now, even though I'm choosing Thursday at 2 a.m., doesn't mean I'm actually gonna reboot this dev device at Tuesday at, thir at, at 2 a.m. because I don't have a, a rule, a filter, and anything assigned to that yet. And again, we're going to get into it. I just wanna kind of point out that you can simply drop down into those fields or simply come in and change them, okay? Now, you can do that at a single device level. You can do that at a customer level as well. So if I come in here, and I click into Red321 Company, and I go to Custom Properties, you will see all of the custom properties associated for this customer. Again, oh wow, I've just upgraded my customer to fully manage with security. That is my Platinum, Platinum program. Boom. Once I put that, I turn on all of my special automation. I make sure that they get my, my security stack. They're getting threat locker, Cisco umbrella, DNS filter, EDR, you name it, right? Because now they're paying for it, right? So you can quickly modify these custom properties, tie them to management routines within rules and automatically do things very, very quickly. Now, if you do that with a customer, well, you're now basically telling all that automation sitting within the rules to go ahead and execute as soon as you modify that custom property for this organization. Okay, I think I belabored the point at this point. So let's go on to slide deck because we're gonna talk about using custom properties. How are we gonna talk about this? We're gonna talk about this in one, two, and three different ways. Now, this is a condensed version of our uh, boot camp we have on custom properties. This is an hour long version. Um, you're going to find that a lot of our boot camps are now going to be shored up and tightened because we're getting really into specific themes, less commercials, less fluff, we'll call it, you know, no polls, that kind of thing. All right. So again, we're going to talk about using custom properties with uh, rules for patch management. Two, we're going to talk about storing BitLocker keys or you know, public IP or any information you want to store in Central. And then we're going to talk about deploying software through a uh, software application through uh, an automation policy using inputs stored in the custom property. That sounds kind of wordy, but once I go through it, you'll it all kind of makes sense. All right. Now, before I do that, I just want to take a screenshot and keep myself on track here because I'll go through one and completely forget what number two is. All right. So what we're gonna do here is come back and we're gonna talk about that patch days of the week, right? Now, if I go back to uh, custom properties, and again, I did those patch reboots of the week, right? And again, Monday three, Thursday five, Tuesday one, and I could add in a few others if I wanted to. However, what I also want to do is filter. Right, so if I come into configuration and then filters, what I am going to do is add a custom device property filter, right? So I'm gonna go into custom device property is going to be patch days, reboots days of the week equal to, and then again, I'm gonna build this as not defined because effectively, if I'm doing <clears throat> these reboots, these are kind of outside of my patch management reboots. Maybe I have reboots scheduled every two weeks or once a month at 3 a.m. on the third Thursday or something crazy, All right? Now, what I could do is turn one of these on and invoke the automation that corresponds to this that's going to pick up the devices like servers and then reboot them. 
But right now, I want this not defined. Okay, so I'm going to call this patch reboots for the week. Okay, again, I still haven't come up with a better name. If you have, please use the questions pane. Okay, I'll save that. Now, now that we've defined that filter, right? What we can do is come into the rule, right? And what we can do is add. Because when we built that filter, we built it for servers, right? That was that filter that's going to correspond to them, right? And then what we can do here is if I go and call this patch emer, emer, e -M -E -R, gen C, reboot, schedule, right? What I can do now is I can now take that patch reboots of the week, where if, if I can find it, patch, patch. There we go. But again, behind this right now is undefined. It's not targeting anything. What then I can do is now assign it to my customers. I can now also include scheduled maintenance. So I can come in here and add a scheduled reboot for, again, here, I'll go Thursday at 3 a.m., okay? Something like that. And then what I want to do is, you know, fill it all out, schedule it at 3.30 or 3 a.m., and then off to the races I go. Come on now. It never works. Perfect. There. Now, I would want to schedule this and make sure, I'm not going to fill it all out, but I'm sure you know how to use the the maintenance uh, the maintenance window or the scheduler for this. But from there, what I can do is now use this and save it. Now, when I come back to this particular rule, which I usually put a star beside because I always like my rules to kind of float up to the top. Paul likes to use an underscore. I like to use an asterisk. But if I go back to patch, where are you here, Patch? There we go. Now I am going to put a star beside it. The reason why I, because I build a lot of custom rules, um, and a lot of partners do, is that you want your custom stuff to kind of segment away from the default and central stuff, right? That way you can kind of tell and tweak whatever you need to, right? So again, star, and then I've got this for both customers. I've got my automation for my maintenance windows. Now I would need to build out the other three that I built out for Tuesday and everything else. You get the idea. So I would build out all my schedules. And then for then, you can see that, you know, well, is it targeting anything, right? It's not, it's not defined, right? Now I can even go into the filter and then also target on that or what I can do is, if I come in, I can now go into the custom property. And what I would want to do is, if I go into the custom property for patch reboots of the week, again, I am adhering to all servers, right? But now what I can do is switch that off on mass and then turn it on on Thursday, because I know that it's Okay, I should have built one for Friday because um, if I was to talk about it right now, it would be Friday at 3 a.m. tomorrow. But let's just pretend it's Wednesday today, all right? Just humor me. <laughs> so, again, I would turn on something like Thursday at 3 a.m. because I know that's the closest day, right? I'm not going to do it today, which is the Thursday. I'm going to do it the Friday at the 3 a.m. Um, but we use this, and then I can save and propagate that. It's going to force its way down across all of my devices, okay? It's all going to say at 3 a.m. And then effectively, all I need to do, and I, the only reason why I'm not targeting devices is because I do not want to reboot any of my um, hardware because there's users tied to them. Just know that when you add in a custom device property, it has to be targeting something, right? So when you flip it, it's now going to target what you need it to. Right. So that being said, this is how you have custom properties that are now targeting um, a particular device class like servers that is going to invoke automation based on the automation that you've included within the rule. So if I come back here, 
monitoring rules and I go into this emergency reboot schedule, you can see that I have this and behind this, it is now tied to Thursday at 3 a.m. And the next maintenance window that is going to come up would be that Thursday at 3 a.m. Again, if it was Wednesday. <clears throat> And again, assigned to all customers. And then maybe, you know, there's a zero day vulnerability, right? So you were going to patch all of those systems at 3 a.m. at that very time. Okay. So that's a small little use case that I like to show for, you know, kind of emergency reboots. It could be emergency installs. It could be a lot of different use cases. I like to get into patch groups that way as well. Patch groups, you typically can do manually. You can do them dynamically. I don't have enough devices to really effectively show you that, but if I wanted to put this as patch group two, I would simply go into custom properties and then change that patch group. I'll use this into, let's say patch group A, right? That's all this is, right? Patch group A has the automate corresponding automation within the rule. And then it targets, it targets it the way it needs to. Now, that being said, let's go on to number two which is storing BitLocker keys and public IPs in a custom property. Now, if you're going to store information, you want it to repeat because information changes from time to time. BitLocker keys typically 99.9% .9 of the time will never change, right? The drive that is in that laptop will always have that same BitLocker key based on the TPM module that is in that laptop. Now, that being said, what happens is if you don't have that BitLocker key because you were running CrowdStrike about a month ago and you're wanting to fix everything and you don't have the BitLocker key is you're in trouble, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to build what is called a scheduled task profile. Okay. Now I've already pre-built it here, so we're going to do that again. Okay. So I'm going to call this server special automation okay and i don't know how i messed that up but i did automation there we go auto there we go i'll copy and paste that and then what i'm going to do is choose automation manager policy now, I've already uploaded the BitLocker key automation. I've already uploaded the threat locker. I've already uploaded the, the IP information. So all of that information is readily available right here. You want to head on over to the enable cookbook, which is me.n-able.com. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come into resources and click into the automation cookbook. And from here, this is where you can do public IP, and you'll see several different types of automation for public IP. I typically go with this one. This has the most fields and is all done by API. Okay, so I would use that one. And for example, BitLocker. Okay, there's a few of these. You can enable BitLocker, you can export the keys. This is the one I usually use. Um, you can pre-check to see if BitLocker is capable. Um, and then there's maybe a couple duplicates with some different nuances. Anyways, long story short, there's also BitLocker disk encryption monitoring. So you can monitor to make sure that BitLocker is in there. But what I'm going to do is simply focus on custom properties, okay? So I've uploaded the automation for the BitLocker key export to NCentral. I'm gonna choose that. What I'm gonna do is now map that encrypted drive, okay? Name, well, I didn't create a name, but here's the key. So I'm going to then put BitLocker key, and then I can schedule it out. Now, important about scheduling automation in the central, uh, BitLocker keys won't change daily. So typically running this on a recurring job once a day is going to be sufficient. Do not repeat every five minutes. That is completely excessive. You can do something like hourly and then put every you know, 12 and then repeat every 12 if you want to, right? Something like that. Here, let me put something in here. Let's go at 7 a.m. There. So it's going to do this twice a day, 
right? Once at 7 a.m., once at 7 p.m. Now, again, if the if the device is only on between 9 to 4.30, oh, well, okay, well, let's put something at, um, you know, 1,600, right? Perfect. We're going to do it at 4 p.m. Okay, so just again, you can do these rep repeating schedules based on the availability of your customer, right? If you have a 24 by 7 environment, well, then you might want to schedule something at 3 a.m. as well. Okay, now here we go. We give it a name again, BitLocker Keys. And then what I'm going to do is set up that automation the way I need to. No notifications. Okay, now I can also do public IP. So if I come in here and do public IP address, okay, again, I'm going to store that IP address where? In the custom property for public IP. Oop, not Windows compatibility, public IP. Again, schedule that out. Now, this is public IP. This one's a little different. You know, BitLocker keys don't change, but public IP does. People move around. They go from the office. They work from home. So you can actually understand the IP address schemes that the public IP is using. Are they always at home? Well, I know my public IP for my home address does not change very often. I think once every three months, okay? Same thing with the end user. If they're a public IP that is now in China, well, maybe the laptop's been stolen, right? And then been sold on eBay or something like that. Anyways, long story short, you want to record, if it does get stolen, you want to record the last known public IP so that obviously you can put that information into Google and, and find out the, the nearest geolocation of that public IP, right? So I'm going to put public IP up here. And then save. That's it. Server special automation. Now, if the public IP server's not going to move, right? I just like using this use case. Anyways, save. And then we have a scheduled task profile, right? That now corresponds to exporting information into the custom property. Now, let me show you what it looks like. So if I go to all device and I go to my test machine here, settings, custom property, public IP, BitLocker key, right? So that information can be really important to you um, if something ever goes wrong. Awesome. Now, well, let's work on to number three here, which is deploying software through an application. Again, when I was doing that special automation, maybe I also want to include something else. I misclicked there. Give me one second here. Profile. Is that I want to also include now, if this was for workstations, let me just go back and I'll go into workstation special automation because this is where I'm going to add in automation manager policy and then put in threat locker. Now, if I had threat locker map appropriately, outside of just the threat locker unique identifier, which is the UID, I can now select my property because it's a password type. Nobody else can see that UUID. I'm the one who's working on the security team. I put that information into in central so nobody knows what that key is. But this is where I can now, at that org level, input the threat locker install key that nobody else can see. And then I can simply type the name. So I'm going to say red321 company. Okay. And then again, schedule it out. Right. You may want to. Depending on your automation or what have you, you're going to do to check to see if uh, threat, threat locker is there. Typical conditional stuff. You look at things like registry key, you look at file and folder, you look at any processes running. If those all equal zero, then what's going to happen is that it's not there. And then you're going to try to install BitLocker using the information provided. And again, you would want to do that maybe every four hours, right? Or twice a day, something like that. Okay. And then save. You're done. That's all you need to do. Pretty cool, right? Because this may fall, this special automation may fall into a rule called special automation. I won't rebuild this one because all it really means is that customer who is red three, two, one. Now, Wheat Ridge Bakery, they're paying me 
$800 a month to, ma to manage their EDR and patch management, right? That's all they can afford, right? But three, two, one, they're all in, fully managed with security and everything else, right? So they get my special automation, devices to target, workstations and laptops, it is threat locker. So click save and we're done. That's it. That's how easy using these custom properties can be within these rules. Awesome. Okay. Let's move right along here because we are at the halfway point just over. Ba -ba -bum. Where's my slides? There we go. Okay. Now, already demoed using custom properties. Now we're going to talk about the export and the import of custom properties. Now, I've already done a lot of the legwork uh, in terms of, you know, getting the scripts ready and what have you, but I'm going to do a little quick tutorial right now on the cookbook. If you simply come to the cookbook and you type in API. Now, I'm not going to take a lot of credit for this. I probably should, but I'm not going to. Um, I've worked very closely with our developers around APIs. I've very work very closely with our PM team on APIs. If you have a particular API that you want, feel free to throw it into the chat uh, or send me an email. Uh, my email is letter J, M-U-R-P-H-Y. You can hit me up on Reddit. You can hit me on, up on LinkedIn. I'm on MSP Geek. You can find me in various, various ways. Long story short is that my colleague, Paul Kelly, has gone ahead and actually built in all of the PowerShell automation that you would need to work with these REST APIs. And if you're not familiar with our REST API, if you come into your FQDN of your server and then type in API-explore right after or slash API explore, um, that's one R in there, there we go. If you type that after your FQDN, you're gonna pull up what is effectively or used to be known as your swagger board or what is now known as the uh, open API uh, for uh, your end central server. Now, when you come in here, it looks like a fairly small list. Now, if I was to expand some of this stuff, right, right, you're gonna see very quickly that we have quite a few REST API endpoints already pre-built, ready to go for you to use for various tasks. Today, we're going to talk about custom properties, of course. So here they all are, right? Now, this is still in what we call preview. Um, it is um, effective as of 24.3. So if you're running 24.1 or 2, you won't see any of this. If you're running 23.4, you are what we call good to go. It's still technically under preview, however, because um, we're still testing it and working out some bugs or what have you. Um, but just know that you can now pull information out of N Central, and then you can also push information into N Central. How do we do that? We do that with VS Code. <laughs> well, I do anyways. You can use your own code editor. Is there anyone on the line who's not using VS Code? I know Sebastian's on the line, so he's probably using something funky, but um, anyone else using anything outside of VS Code? I would love to see someone say Notepad++. I'm just kidding. I'm sure you're not doing that. But just know there's two steps to being able to work with the API. The reason being is that you need a JSON web token and you need what is called a bearer token. The bearer token is what sets the limit for interacting with the API based on that JSON web token. So that it expires after a while. So you need to do a refresh of the token and you can ask for the, the token you know, every 30 minutes if you wanted to. Now, if I hit play on here, uh, multiple devices, here we go. Okay, let me just get rid of this. There we are. So first and foremost, I'm going to ask using my this particular script. Now, this one is called, come back here. I want to make sure that you, okay. So, and central REST API exchange JSON for access token, right? So coming back into VS Code, what this is basically going to allow me to do is authenticate into the API, okay? Using the FQDN and the JSON web token. That is it. 
Now I'm not going to go through the rest of the code, but effectively what it's going to do is ask for the JSON or the bearer token to allow us in, right? I'm going to click play. Boom, boom. That's it. Done. Now I have full access to the API. I can do whatever I want. Now what I can do here is now go on here is where'd you go? This is the one I wanted. Okay. Now what I can do is come in and start using some of those other scripts that are on the cookbook, right? This script will retrieve the value of all custom device properties in N Central. To retrieve the value for one customer, change the customer ID from 50. By, by the way, depending on whether you're hosted or what have you, it may not always be 50, by the way. So um, there's various ways. Here, let me just show you. Okay, so if you come up to da, 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 customer, are you a customer? I'm under configuration, that's why. Okay, it's my first day. All right, so you can see that it says access code. I don't know why we put access code. It's in central. Once upon a time, we called it an access code. We now call it a customer ID. All right, so that's what this is. There's a customer ID. All right behind each one. Now, if I go to my system level, and then I go to my service org, I can see if I go into uh, enable head nerds, okay, oop, details, hmm, one second. There is a way to retrieve the SO ID. I believe the default is 50, so you should be okay. If it's not, you may have to log a ticket. Um, yeah, we don't, there is a way to do this. I'm just not remembering how to do it. Will, you're on the line, I'm sure you know, you can tell me. Anyways, long story short, we're gonna use that. Now, what we're gonna do here is come back to VS Code, and what we're gonna do is now use that code number ID 50, because I know that what, that is mapped to my particular SO. And then based on that, you can see that it's doing a number of different things, okay? Effectively, it's going to pull all of this information for you. And then what it's going to do is that we're going to do um, an export to a CSV, and then you can even go ahead and change that location if you so choose or change the name of the file format. So from here, I'm gonna do device, um cdps something like that right i'll use that and then what i'm going to do is hit play or f5 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into file explorer and then what i'm going to do is c temp device cdps is opening up my other screen and then we, here we have it. Now you do need to do a little bit of formatting so you can read all of it. There we go. And value, there. I have things like my you know, BitLocker key, public IP, there we go. And I have some other non-defined stuff, right? Now, Obviously, when I did public IP or someone did public IP on um, Paul's laptop, I probably wiped out the automation correctly <laughs> and, and overrid it. Um, so my bad, um, but I can fix that another time. It was there in the morning. Long story short is that you can export that information and even upload information, right? Because you can use effectively um, custom properties as variables. Right, so I think that's where we segue now into some of that. Nope, let me go back. I, I do wanna show this very quickly. If I go into system, let me go back down to nerds. And then I click on actions and then I click on run automation. If I go into, what's a good one? Public IP, sure. Again. I can now export that information directly to that custom property. So that is effectively taking the automation and forcing the information directly um, 
to an output parameter. So you're outing the information into the custom property. Now, if I do something like BitLocker, same thing, okay? Output parameter. However, if I do ins, um, I'm at a, what's a good one? Threat. Okay, inputs. These are the variables that we can use, right? Again, I created one threat locker uh, ID as a password type, so it's nice and hidden for one customer. But if I come in a custom property and I have several, right? Now, I would need to be down at you know, the, the onboarding customer. So say I'm gonna go into Red comp Company, and then I'm going to go into Run Automation, click, and then Threat. Well, I'm going to select that UUID that I just updated, right, for this customer. Client name, red321, et cetera. Done. So again, lots of flexibility around custom properties. Now, one thing I have not shown you is that you can actually, en masse, change those variables and then import them into N Central as well. So if you come back to the cookbook, you will see okay uh, list all customers export get exchange what if i put get here i'll just go manually find it mm -mm -mm list here's export customer properties for multiple customers let's go into show 50. here set custom properties for multiple devices okay and here's that script where if i was to make some changes to that excel spreadsheet so say i'll just use public ip 192.168.1.125 and then 192.168.1.126 okay this is probably poor examples but if i was to to use that right what i'm going to be able to do is effectively overwrite those blank values with these values now there are way better use cases for this again if you have a your own internal asset tag for your devices. Not like a Dell asset tag, because that's all actually stored in and central, but if you have your own, like if some, some MSPs have referred laptops that they sell, and they like to track those, and they have their own bar barcodes and their own um, effectively asset tags, you can you know upload those en masse and store them directly in and central using this particular format, okay? That's all you need. You need to have this in like this. That's the, the columns that you're going to use. And then with the corresponding device names, then you can upload this information, right? All you need is this. And I'll save that. And I will go into my folder here and open that up with Visual Studio Code, open, and here you have it. Give me the property name. So again, public IP, use that name. I forget what I called it. It was like device, CDP, whatever it might be. And effectively, that's all you're gonna need. Click play and import. That's it. That's how easy it is to use custom properties and APIs within N Central. Okay, so next up, which we already demoed that, so I'll go back. Um, hopefully we can put the, the demo uh, before all the API scripting that we just did. Um, important notes and tips and tricks, okay? so. Key considerations and best practices for custom properties. And this stuff's important, so don't leave me just yet. 
only because setting custom properties at the customer level will not update all the sites automatically. Most people think that happens. It doesn't. Now, is that something we could improve? I would say we should. However, um, it does not today. Filters are dynamic. Modifying a custom property can trigger rules immediately and change various configurations. Again, I mean, reboots at Tuesday, reboots at Thursday, 3 a.m. Creating custom properties on a large server, 10,000 plus, will take more time than normal. How long? There's a lot of factors like how busy your end central server is, the resources available, et cetera, et cetera. Just know that if you're trying to do an export, it may take 10 minutes, right? Clicking save and propagate will change the value effective on all effective uh, device, affected devices and customers and sites, okay? So a lot of people use misuse that save and propagate button a bit too much. It's like, oh, all my custom properties are blank now. Well, okay, did you save and propagate? Yeah, I did. No, it's overwritten. So careful with this one. Create device-based custom properties based on device class and not operating system. I don't know. I mean, if you want to use device class or uh, operating system, I would say go for it. Device class is way easier and faster. For easier management, create all custom properties uh, of all types at the SO level. This is important because there's nothing worse than going, okay, well, I'm pretty sure I created a custom property for that customer. Well, you did, but at the customer level, right? So try to manage it all at the SO. Always use drop-down field when appropriate to avoid of avoid typos, okay? Whereas text type, you can mistype and get into typos. I mean, you can with drop downs as well, but always create custom properties with the placeholder value like not defined, none, null. You can use a period, just have something in there, okay? So that you can use and filter on those values, right? So again, if you're running a an export and you see a, a bunch of blanks, can't really filter on blank, even though you kind of can, but it's not it's not as nice. Let's just put it that way. All right, that's the boot camp for today. Uh, my name is Jason Murphy. I would love for you to give me a rating on today's boot camp. Um, or this one's a little bit longer than before. Okay, so um, five being awesome, one being absolute trash. Let me know how I did today. Um, only because in order for me to do more boot camps like this, um, I need to prove to my bosses that we're doing a good job here. Okay, I'm going to keep that open for another five seconds or so. So if you just give me a quick rating there, that would be awesome. And I'll shut her down. And now what we're going to do is, and let me just see my screen here. Perfect. We're going to do a Q&A. Now, you guys are really quiet today. I had a few questions this morning. So, um, but that was also the first time I did this boot camp. Um, so just know that if you do have questions, there's always help available for you. You can reach out to me. I can point you in the right direction. So letter J-M-U-R-P-H-Y at n com. I can get you over to our partner success management team who can also put you in touch with our partner success engineering team or even our enhanced services team. Now, my name is Jason Murphy. Uh, I appreciate your attendance today and I hope to see you on the next boot camp. Y'all take care. Yes, I said y'all, even though I'm Canadian. I spent a lot of time in Texas this past summer. Everyone take care. Bye-bye.